Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey, and this is an App Game Kit game development tutorial. Now, as some of you might know, uh, my favorite game programming language is BASIC. I, I've done tutorials on game programming languages like Blitz BASIC, Monkey X, Cerberus X, Monkey X2. They all have tried to replicate the uh, BASIC beginners all purpose instruction symbolic code so that's naturally i would also do a tutorial on app game kit because this also replicates the that basic language as basic is my favorite programming language when it comes to building games i guess my second favorite will be javascript but anyway in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to get an animated character walking in your game and you can maybe supplement this tutorial with other tutorials that are on the web and expand on what we talk about here in this tutorial I got everything divided into sections and as you go along uh, feel free to stop this video and read the comments the comments come after the the double slashes and as you, as you can see, that I got it, everything uh, divided into sections. For example, um, here is the Windows setup section. Here in the second section is the everything dealing with the character. This third section is everything dealing with the floor. This fourth section is starts the game loop. This fifth section has to do with the camera. Um, this sixth section has to do with uh, the controls and the seventh section has to do with dealing with Henry's XYZ coordinates and this A section has to do with the end of the loop. So that's the way I organize my code. And like I said, feel free to stop this video and read some of the comments as we go along. Here I set it up so that my errors could be shown. Next, I showed the window title at the top of the window. This is the window size. Um, I made it so that the window could be resized. The game will run 60 frames per second. This scissors part is so there are no black borders in the game. And this 101, 120, 154 are the RGB colors that make my sky blue. In the character section, I gave my character an ID of 1. So whenever you see this 1 in the first columns of all this of these different parts, is a, it refers to my character. That is, instead of putting the word Henry here, I put the word 1. So just remember that. Here is when I uploaded my animated model. It's that same dot b3d model that i used in my other tutorials like in my blitz basic tutorial so that's what i did here and here i loaded my characters textures materials or clothing and here's a very important part right here the, the set image wrap u and set image wrap v are some very important parts it makes it so that you your the textures materials and clothing on your character don't come out blurry and skewed and distorted it makes it so that your textures look the way they're supposed to look. and so again uh, this one represents the character and this, this other one represents the this character's clothing which i also gave the id to one these first two ones has to do with uh Again, this animated model and the animated model is also mesh, so I put one on both of those. And essentially, it just has to do with the character itself. And and then this other one has to do with the texture I gave the character again. And this zero has to do with the the channel. For example, if you want to add more textures onto your character, first you would copy this. And then paste it under there and then give this a, a new ID you can choose three or whatever you want whatever number you want I usually use numbers in app game kit 
and then you can change this to whatever the file name is and then after that you go down here copy this paste it and then change this third one to three uh, for the texture file that we just loaded remember we got three here and three here we're putting this ID right here and then change this to one and that's how you load different textures on top of each other if there's more than one texture for a particular mesh you put you start with zero here because I know as humans when we count we start with one two three four five six seven eight nine ten but computers or at least an app game kit it starts with zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I hope this all makes sense okay so I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this and then I set the character's position which would be zero on the XYZ coordinate then I set the character's animation speed I aligned the camera's rotation with the character's point of view fixed object pivot is what helps turn the and rotate the character so next section is dealing with the floor here I, I gave my box an ID of two so instead of calling it box I called it two um, so whenever you see two in this first column it has to do with the floor and it, so this first section has to do with creating a box and giving the box a, the parameters of, the box is 50 pixels wide uh, 5 pixels tall and 50 pixels going forward and backwards and then here I added the grass texture onto the box onto or the floor and then I set the floor's position uh, so that it seemed like the character would be w walking on the floor then I put the two textures together I gave the actual box an ID of two and I also gave the the box's texture an image of two so you got so here you got the model which is two and the texture which is two and then I made the floor bigger and usually in app game kit when you see four numbers like this um, the first number we have to do with the ID of the object I made it 30 pixels wide 10 pixels tall and 30 pixels going forward and backwards so this next part is where the game loop begins now in this camera section I position the camera so that it can follow my character and in this move camera local Z that's to move the camera behind the character and and in this local Y part the, I just move the camera up so that the character could be more on screen instead of it showing like half of the character's body if that makes sense next is the control section now, now there's, there's two ways to set up this control section you could uh, do all, all if in this sections like this you could just you could just do uh, in diff here and then in delete else and put uh, in diff here and you can do all your uh, controls like that too and that's the way I used to do this uh, you could do it that way but if you want all your controls to be unified under maybe just one one unit or or you want everything as one section as far as the computer is concerned then you would use else if that so that connects all your controls together under one umbrella instead of having instead of having them under separate umbrellas uh, in the other way I just showed you and the reason that this is important is for this part here it connects everything above as a unit so that it could also work together with this play animation part so this so this above part is saying whenever you move these 
whenever the character is moved, you also play the animation part. It, otherwise, if you do the other way that I just just showed you, you, you know, having an if, end if, if, end if, end if, if, end if way, you, you won't be able to connect all your move controls to this play animation, or you might use more code to do the same thing. So that's why I use else if here. And I guess one thing I, that I'm confused about is um, this, to play the animation part, you have to do it off the else statement. This section says, if you move your character otherwise, else means otherwise, play the walking animation. Now, does that make sense? And that's why I have trouble kind of interpreting this part, but I guess that's just the way this works in this uh, programming language. Babylon JS has something similar, and maybe it's just because my limited knowledge of programming that I don't understand how how this works. I mean, the way I was I would have thought it would work is um, you can put this play animation between all of these, and it will work like that, but this is not so in this um, app game kit, nor Babylon JS. Like I said, I don't know everything. I'm still learning. And and if you have any idea of why it works like this, instead of me putting the play object in, under each of these columns, uh, please let us know in the comment section. But but anyway, this is how this works. So so just put it if you want walking with your movement. Okay, so let's deal with the controls now. Now this first part, this 38 is the up arrow key. And move object local Z has to do with moving the character forward. Remember this one is the character. Instead of putting Henry, I put one here. Because that's kind of the way App Game Kit works. Okay, so this one moves the character forward. And this Henry Z equals Henry Z plus one. Um, this just has to do with uh, mapping the character and showing where Henry is at in this environment. It's to keep track of Henry's coordinates. This stuff is printed down here. And you'll see it when we launch the game. The second part has to do with the down arrow key and moving Henry backwards. This minus one right here uh, moves Henry backwards when the down arrow key is pressed. And again, this Henry Z equals Henry Z minus one uh, is the map again. The next part has to do when we press the right arrow key. This moves Henry to the right. And this Henry X part are the coordinates on where Henry will be when going in to the right direction. Same thing right here with this 37, that's the left arrow key. And this moves Henry to the left of where Henry will be when he goes in the left direction. Finally, this 188 is the comma key, uh, you know, with the, the punctuation mark comma. And if you press that, the character will rotate. And this, this rotate object local Y is what helps the character rotate to the left and the rotate camera local y also moves the camera too and this move object local x the minus 50 is to keep the character in the center of the screen while you rotate and the same thing is true if we punch the period punctuation button as if you're typing a period at the end of a sentence that's the button and so if that button is pressed you your character will rotate to the right. And again, this get object y plus 10 rotates a character to the right. And this rotate camera local y part keeps the camera on the character while he rotates. And move object local x is again to keep the character in the center of the screen while you rotate. And again, I've already explained this 
play object in the animation part. And then the last part is print Henry's X, Y, Z coordinates on screen. This part does exactly that using the print statements. And the numbers move up, down, left, or right based on where the character is going. And then the game loop ends right here. Okay, so now let's run this game to, so you can see what's going on. Okay, so now here's our character, and this is what it looks like after all is said and done. And as you can see in the left corner, I have my X, Y, Z coordinates. They're all set to zero. It's because the character haven't moved yet. Let's move my character forward. Now, when I move my character forward, you will notice this Z part is keeping up with where the character is while we're moving. So let's go. So that, that this is what happens when I move forward. And if I move backwards, it's gonna that number is gonna go down. And this is all because of again this this part right here. This Henry Z equals Henry Z plus one, and Henry Z equals Henry Z minus one, uh, right here, and me putting a variable down here, and me printing the variables out down here. Okay, so that's how that works. And you know, same thing would happen if I press the left arrow key. Now you can see the uh, x coordinate uh, moving. And if I go to the right and press the right arrow key, the x coordinate will be moving to the right. This is all, I do these things because um, right now there's no scene editor for App Game Kit. So this is what you do if there is no scene editor. Maybe I might make another tutorial to show you how to, you know, place objects in your scene, um, you know, using this kind of system here. Unlike Unity, you don't have no scene editor. And using this method is a way around all that stuff. And it makes development a little faster uh, or if you if you want to I can even include a link below in how I did that in Cerberus X but I don't know maybe I might make a separate tutorial for app game kit maybe so now our character moves forward and backwards and left and right so now I'm gonna press the the comma button you know the same button as if you're gonna write a comma in a sentence when you're writing a text or paper or report or a book or or something I'm gonna press the comma button and if I press the comma button my character rotates to the left and if I press the period button as as in a period at the end of the sentence you know as if you're when you're writing an essay or book or paper or something when I press that button the character moves to the right so that, that's all I wanted to show you so you can take this knowledge and what I showed you in this tutorial and, and expand on it, you know, or use it as a supplement to other tutorials on the web or whatever. I just want to show you how to get a walking animated character in your game, in app game kit. So until next time, thanks. Bye. Dude.